Glory to you, O Lord. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but the one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove and a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. The Lord be with you. Holy and gracious God, on this day as we've heard the reading of your word, so let our hearts and minds truly receive that. Help us to hear your voice speaking to us yet again and embolden us to trust you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. There is a television show that I have never watched, but I'm intrigued by the premise. It's called The Voice. Has anyone here ever watched The Voice? Man, a bunch of you have. What intrigues me is that in this show, it starts with typically four singing stars. These are people who have made it in the industry. And they're seated in these chairs, and their backs are toward the performers. So they're seated. The performers are back here. They can't hear. Or they can't see them. And these contestants come out and sing their best. And as these stars are seated, they're listening. They're listening for the voice. They're not just listening to, oh, he, you've got a nice voice. They're not just listening for someone who could sing maybe at their church, but not make it on the radio. They're listening for that voice. That voice that's got the wow factor. That voice that's got that depth and power and they can just feel it in their bones. And if they hear the voice, they push the button, their, their chair spins around, and they can see who it is that's singing. Then the show goes on, and, and if someone else is turned around also, then the, the performer gets to pick who maybe they're going to take and go with. But that star will coach them through a competition. I don't know what happens after that. I don't pay attention that much. But I've gained enough knowledge about the start of the show that I'm fascinated because I believe that's part of what's going on in our readings today. Listening for the voice. Oftentimes we get caught up in reading the gospel reading for the day, which is valid and wonderful and powerful. But I invite us to take note of all the lessons, specifically Psalm 29 today. The, our cantor was out sick today, so we thank Diane for reading the uh, text of the psalm for us in worship. But did you hear about the voice? The voice of the Lord is over the waters. Have, how many have been out on the waters, maybe out on the gulf or on the bay, when you've heard thunder someplace at a distance? It just rumbles and roars. There's nothing quite like it. It's an amazing sound. And the writer tells us the voice of the Lord is over the waters and God, the God of glory thunders. You can feel it in your bones. The voice of the Lord is powerful. 
The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Did you hear that last, yesterday afternoon and last evening there were severe storms at the north end of Houston all the way up into Liberty County? And they've got trees that have just been broken down, split and fallen. To imagine God's voice speaking in a tree will just split. He makes Lebanon to skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young ox. A response to the voice is joy. Have you ever seen, a, been driving along and seen some cows with some calves out in the field and the calves just are kicking up their heels, kicking up their heels in joy, so happiness of life. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl. And all say, glory. What's being described is that voice that has that wow factor, that gathers and gleans our total attention. That voice that speaks to something deeper and broader and wider than the limitations of our hearts and minds. It's that voice. God's voice. John, in the beginning of his gospel, gives us an understanding of who this God is. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the Genesis account, we hear of God's voice speaking and bringing all things into being. This is that voice, this voice that transforms everything. This voice which is not done. John was in the wilderness, and he was sent by God to prepare the way. He's calling people to repentance, and people are coming because people are desiring, needing, longing for something. They've grown weary in their world. They look around of life under the Roman Empire, and it's not all it's cracked up to be. They look at their religious life, and there are plenty of systems and rituals and, and things they had to do, but again, there was not that release, that peace. They were searching for something more. They were seeking to hear that voice. They looked to John, and John lets them know, it's not me. I'm not, <laughs> I may be a mouthpiece, but I'm not even allowed to untie the guy's sandals. He is so much more. And then he gives that description. This is this kind of weird description, and we read it one way, but it means something else. We hear about he's, he's got his winnowing fork in his hand. He's, he's got the grain, and he's going through threshing it. And he's going to collect the good part, the grain, and the chaff he's going to burn. In our minds, we for some reason read that as the good people are the grain, and they're going to go over here into the granary, and the bad people, I don't know who the bad people are yet, but the bad people are going to get burned up. No. The grain and the chaff are of the same stock. They are together. What he's trying to say is that this one who's coming, this one is going to take away that which holds us back from God, is going to do all that is necessary for our salvation, to restore us to right relationship with God Almighty. And then immediately after that, Luke gives us the rest of the story that the baptism has taken place. Jesus, he didn't even notice Jesus in the Gospel of Luke except that as Jesus is praying afterward, then here comes a dove descending upon him and the voice. The voice of God. 
that voice that causes cedars to shake, that voice that causes Lebanon and Mount Hermon to act like happy little calves, this voice that rumbles and thunders across creation, this voice that makes all things and brings all things into being, that voice speaks and says, this, you are my beloved. With you I am well pleased. And over a little bit of time, there will be another gathering in the Mount of Transfiguration where there this amazing event takes place. And again, there's this voice, and the voice this time will say, you are my beloved, he is my beloved, listen to him. See, I think that our readings this morning are all drawing us to listen for God's voice still today. God's voice that has not finished speaking, that continues to speak to our hearts and minds, that continues to speak, offering us that which we truly long for. If we look around our society today, it seems that the world is still waiting and watching and wanting, longing for peace, longing for hope. For many, they've looked at the powers to be of the world, and it's not all it's cracked up to be. For many, they've looked at religion as just religion. They're longing for more, and what people are longing for is the gospel, is what Jesus brings us freeing us to be exactly who we've been created to be. Freed by the love of God, we can leap like Lebanon. We can kick up our heels like Mount Hermon. We can take and be jubilant as we live as the forgiven children of God, as we live knowing that we are the beloved, that God loves us. And we can live that into the world. It's not about dotting I's and crossing T's as though there's some system of merits. It's not about looking good in the eyes of the world. It's about being who we are as the beloved and living that out authentically and honestly. Not just on Sundays when we gather. I found that Christians look really good on Sunday mornings. I look really good on Sunday morning. Heck, I'm in this, all this stuff, you know? I, we all can put on our face for that little bit of time. No, what we're talking about is that deeper change, that transformation that comes when we recognize that we too have heard the voice of God, the voice that claims us as a forgiven child, the voice that claims us in love and sends us out freed to live it, to be it in this world. How we live our lives then reflects the voice that we're listening to. I would hope that we are even more attentive than a star seated in a funky chair listening for that voice with the wow. I would hope that our hearts are tuned and listening daily, daily in prayer, conversation with God. It's both speaking and listening. Daring to trust that God may speak in the sheer silence of our lives. I pray that we are listening as we gather together as followers of Jesus, sometimes unsure of where we are and what we're up to, but listening for God's voice through the Scriptures. I pray that we're listening for that voice when we remember our baptism and when we celebrate the communion and hearing God's voice saying, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ that's been shed for you. I pray that we're listening for the voice of God when we hear words of benediction sending us back out into our real lives, into the mundane or the pressure-filled or where we're having to make hard decisions. How are you listening for that voice? Amen.